So today, we're addressing some power concerns with my 1965 Ford Mustang. It's just maybe not the power you're thinking of. Now that about 60% of you clicked off, what are we even doing here and why? Well, last year we installed Holley's Sniper 2 fuel injection system, which actually did a lot to improve the drivability and performance of the car. However, we also added a lot more load to the electric and charging system. We added an electric fuel pump, we have an ECU, much more modern ignition components, not to mention the electronic fuel injectors, the electric cooling fan, and a more modern stereo. All those things combined actually allowed a lot more load to the electrical system. And when you have the lights running, the heater fan blowing, this current alternator and charging system actually struggles to keep up. So I reached out to my friends at Powermaster who recommended and hooked me up with one of their one wire alternators. Now I'll talk to you a little bit about what a one wire alternator is and why it's important in just a little bit. But for right now, all you need to know is that this is gonna provide a lot more juice to the electrical systems so it can keep up. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a little, a couple reasons why you may want to upgrade your alternator, what a one wire alternator is, and I'm gonna cover the installation. And a little spoiler alert, it's dead simple to convert to one of these one wire alternators. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the battery and yikes, that is a horror show. So I'll show you how to clean this up in a little bit. We're actually gonna throw this on the charge. Once the battery is removed, you're gonna plug this harness right here. We're gonna take this taped up thing, this taped up harness right here. We're gonna roll the tape back. I'm not really sure where this is, but I doubt it left the factory that way. But we do need to disconnect this and this wire here is part of the wiring harness on the alternator, so we don't need this anymore. And then future friend will have to figure out how to clean these up before we even need them. So this wire had to be hooked up. To 12 volts. I don't know if you need to on another install, but as you can see in another clip that the wiring harness was pretty hacked up. So I needed to hook this up. This wire was already 12 volts to make everything work. So then we just connect this harness right here from the voltage regulator. With the wiring harness unplugged, battery removed, we have pretty easy access to the alternator. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this 916 bolt down here. This will let us uh, take off our belt. The next thing we're gonna do is remove this uh, 5 8 bolt bolt right here to actually remove the alternator so oh that's gone forever Find it easier to access the ground strap. Once the alternator is off, you can get your 916 socket in there. Here comes the old alternator. With the old alternator out on the bench, we can talk a little bit about why we want to upgrade our alternator, what a one wire system is, and why it's important. So, first of all, let's talk about why we even bother upgrading an alternator. Like I said earlier, We've added a couple upgrades to this car, like the uh, fuel injection system, an electric cooling fan, and some other things that actually put a little more stress on the charging system than was originally intended. And if you wanna kinda of calculate it, you can kinda of think about your amp output of the alternator as like its capacity almost. If all your electrical systems draw, let's say like 60, 70 amps, you want a charging system to keep up with that that puts at least 70 amps out actually if not more because you want to compensate for a little extra load variations so this original motocraft alternator was good for anywhere between 38 to 65 amps depending on which version you have how old it is and so on and so on i'm not quite sure what this one was originally but it was struggling to keep up with the lights on the fuel pump humming away the stereo on and the heater blasting it was struggling to keep up and I could see my voltage fall pretty frequently. Now, if you're curious kind of how much amps you need your alternator put out, Powermaster actually has a wonderful worksheet for you to fill out on their website. 
It's pretty generalized, not super scientific, but it will give you a great starting point in helping you find which alternator you need. Also, the best part about this Power Over Master alternator is that it comes, it's bench tested and it comes with its own little dyno sheet. So at idle, we know that this alternator is good for 102 amps. At mid-range RPM, or what they call cruising, it's good for 140 amps. And on the top end, it's good for 162 amps. So this is gonna be more than enough we need. It actually gives us a little more bandwidth to add some more things in the future which is really exciting. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is why it's called a one wire alternator. Now, if I flip these around, you can kind of see that the factory alternator has a spaghetti monster mess behind it. And this is all stuff to do with external voltage regulation. So in order to maintain proper voltage, the Mustang relied on external voltage regulators to kind of keep things under control. And that's what all these wires are for. The Power Master uses what's called a one wire system. And that's exactly what it sounds. Basically, all the voltage regulation is done internally, and all we need is a new positive wire to go from the positive terminal on this to the positive terminal on our solder solenoid. So that's all it really is, and we also have a ground strap too. So like maybe not technically one wire, maybe technically two, but that is what a one wire alternator system is, and it's awesome for two reasons. Number one, we're gonna clean up the wiring bay in the car, which is a huge plus, and number two, there's actually less points of failure in here. So hopefully we're gonna make the car a little more reliable. So enough talking, let's go and get this thrown in and put a new belt on and see how she performs. So with the bolt and the block clean, we can attach our new ground strap to the block. Before we go any further, I wanna address the corrosion on the battery. Um, I just wanna give this thing the best chance possible. And so if your battery's corroded, all you really need is some baking soda. And a little bit of distilled water. So I'm just kind of soaking that terminal in that solution of baking soda and distilled water. And you can see it's kind of eating away all that corrosion. I'm gonna let this sit for a couple minutes and then give it a good scrub. And it should be pretty clean. So here comes our new alternator. Get our new belt on. Hide our sense from God. All right, so that should be it for our install. It was honestly pretty simple. All we really had to do was disconnect the harness off the alternator. There was a little bit of extra wiring there from a previous owner that I had to figure out and fix. Yours should be much simpler if it's factory wiring. There was a wiring harness off the original voltage regulator which you have to disconnect. And then after that, it was the two bolts to take off the alternator, put the new alternator in, get the belt tension and hook up our power cable and our ground cable. And then that was pretty much it. And so now we're ready to start the car. And so right away, we could see off our sniper here that we're at right around 14 volts. And before, on the old alternator, it was really struggling to maintain 12 at idle. A lot of times when the car was warm and I was running the accessory fans and stuff, it was barely maintaining 12 volts. And so right now, we're at 14.5 at idle. The engine's already kind of warmed up and we're doing very good. So that's gonna be it for today. Like I said, it was a pretty easy install. If you're marginally manically inclined, it shouldn't take more than about an hour to install, barring that your wiring is in good shape. Mine was a little funky and I had to figure it out and that sent me back just a little bit. However, this was a great install. It hopefully brings a lot more reliability to the car and provides the amount of electricity I need to power the various systems and accessories I have. A couple things I wanna make note of is number one, I ended up having to get a new battery. ProMaster says in their instructions that your battery needs to be fully charged at at least 12.6 volts. You probably saw the battery in the video. It was pretty crusty, pretty old, and I charged it up and then almost immediately it died. So I did end up having to get a new battery. Once that was done, everything worked flawlessly. I ended up leaving the existing harness for the voltage regulator in place. I just kind of wrapped it up in tape and tucked it out of the way. Nothing should be live in there, but just in case I wanted to keep it there, I do plan on replacing all the wiring eventually, so I didn't think about taking it out at this moment. 
The last thing I want to make note of is after you're because you've disconnected the voltage regulator, the alternator light is now on. And so I need to find a way to figure out to keep that off. Maybe it's just taking the bulb out, maybe it's finding a resistor or something, but I need to do a little research on how to figure that out. If you guys know the best way to approach that, let me know down in the comments. But thanks for watching and make sure you stay tuned because the next project we have for this is gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to show you guys. All right, thanks for watching. My name's Chris Friend with Ford Muscle.